Naturally, the outbreak of war in 1861 was the stage on which great songs of enthusiasm and love of country appeared. Neither side ever had a national anthem, but a number of melodies became highly popular because of the sectional loyalties they affirmed. For the South, the body blue flag was the first musical call to arms. The melody had been the official song of the short-lived Republic of West Florida in 1810. When Mississippi left the Union 51 years later, an English-born vaudevillian and songster named Harry McCarthy wrote new words for the old tune, and Mississippians immediately adopted it as their state song. The flag had an all-blue field with a single star in the middle. It was a flag song, like the Star Spangled Banner, it praised a patriotic symbol. McCarthy's lyrics gained prominence in the new Southern Confederacy because of the melody's sentiments of independence and love resolution. The Bonnie Blue Flag celebrated the formation of a new nation, and the words gave the reasons for its creation. This song was sung as much on the home front as in the army, and that made the Bonnie Blue Flag the most popular wartime song in the South. For a band of brothers and native to the soil, fighting for the property we gain by our discord. And when our rights were threatened, the cry was near and far. greatest musical stimulus was the battle cry of freedom. It appeared in the summer of 1862 after President Lincoln issued a call for 300,000 new volunteers. The composer was George Root, the most prolific songwriter of the war. Battle cry was a song of pure nationhood. Repeated use of the words freedom and union gave the song an ideological flexibility that expressed several levels of commitment to the Northern War effort. The tune was catchy, and the words were direct and simple. The battle cry of freedom belonged to Union soldiers. Fighting men in blue shouted it to relieve the tedium of camp life and long marches. Many regiments sang as they charged against enemy lines. Dying boys were known to use their last breaths in mumbling the phrases. Popularity of battle cry never waned. On April 14, 1865, as Union officer Robert Anderson raised the American flag again over then battered Fort Sumter in South Carolina, a Union band in Charleston signaled freedom's victory by playing freedom's most effective war cry. <laughs> of war called for more and more soldiers, as suffering became ever-present and death commonplace. Johnny Rebs and Billy Yanks lost their fervor and a great deal of their optimism. Melodies with themes of anxiety and hope became a natural evolution. One contributor to this category of music was Patrick Gilmore, whom John Philip Sousa would later call the father of military bands. The Irish-born Gilmore immigrated to America in the 1850s. He became a Union bandmaster in the Civil War. 
While stationed in New Orleans in 1863, Gilmore took an old Irish tune and added words of happy anticipation of when the war came to a close and the soldiers could return to those they loved the most. And his song, When Johnny Comes Marching Home Again, was an instant success. It filled an inner need. It was also a song both sides could sing. It was a homecoming melody more popular at wars as wars in the drew near. And the tune maintained its general esteem for decades after the war. This popular setting of orchestra variations arranged by Morton Gould illustrate that Johnny's have been coming home ever since to those happy notes.